In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O O most most merciful God, God, who who has given your your only begotten begotten Son to die for us, have have mercy mercy upon us, and and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And And by your Holy Spirit, Increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. God is in His holy habitation. He settles the solitary in a home. The God of Israel, He is the one who gives power and strength to His people.
thy spirit. Let us pray. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 11th Sunday after Trinity is recorded in Genesis chapter 4. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and born Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. And in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flocks and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened up its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle from Ephesians chapter 2. And you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom all, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that In the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory be to Thee, O Lord. 
Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Thee, O Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we approach the start of school for some, and already the start of school for others, and the start of our weekday school instruction next week, we might be a little bit in the dark. How is this all going to work? Will we start in person and then end up having to come home? How will this remote learning turn out? We've got a lot of questions and very few answers. It makes times like right now extremely challenging. Jesus didn't have this hard of a time with all of His teaching, we suppose. He didn't have to choose between in-person learning and whether or not to set up a Zoom conference call with his disciples or even with the Pharisees. Now, we joke about such things because anything that Jesus did and how he taught, nothing was easy. And quite a, in, in, in reality, it was, it was quite challenging. Today, in the, in the Gospel reading about the Pharisee and the tax collector in the temple, Jesus is teaching something very important. And it's actually central to the Old Testament text, which is our sermon text for today. Last Sunday, we heard about Jesus teaching in the temple. And then He taught the Sunday before that about the shrewd manager in that parable. Jesus keeps on teaching His disciples and whoever might be overhearing what He is saying. And that's what happens when we get to the, about this part of the church here. In the middle of the Trinity season, we start talking more and more about how Jesus teaches, and specifically focusing on the teachings of our Savior to His disciples, sometimes to the Pharisees, and ultimately to you and me. His teaching is essentially what the Trinity season, especially in this non-festival half of the church here, is all about. So we glean from Jesus what He says, but also not only what He says, but also to follow what He does. How He acted. What He does is how we are to do. Now remember, the church here is all about teaching. It has a story to tell. The story of Jesus for our life. Now, in the Old Testament story, this is a text for today that teaches us a lesson. And to better understand what is taught, it's beneficial to get a little bit of a background. And you know it. You know it pretty well, in fact. You know that Cain and Abel's first parents were Adam and Eve, our first parents. And Cain was born before Abel. And Abel and Cain, as they were born, had jobs to do. Cain was a worker of the ground, just like dear old dad. You can imagine him standing beside his father Adam doing this work together. Abel was off in the fields. He was a shepherd of the sheep. Both of these vocations honored God. And whenever they had the opportunity to bring their offerings to the Lord, both of those offerings also could be brought to honor God. One was not better than the other. But as we heard in the text, the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. The problem was not Cain's offering. Rather, it was how he offered it. Genesis chapter 4 does not tell us how Cain offered his offering. But Hebrews chapter 11 does. It says in Hebrews chapter 11 about Abel, by faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. Abel's offering came by faith in the Lord. We are to deuce then that Cain's offering was not coming to the Lord or before the Lord in faith or by faith. Why did he give the offering? We're not exactly sure. 
It doesn't say exactly in the text. But it wasn't with faith that accompanied the offering. It might have been because he felt it was his duty to do it. Maybe he was talked into it by his father. We don't know. But Abel offered his offering in faith. Cain did not. And so now we see it. Cain was not about the Lord's work with his offering. He didn't give his offering by faith. It was a a self-centeredness, you could say, that cried forth even further when he took God's gift of life into his very own possession, and he rose up, and he killed Abel in the field. Cain's selfishness, his me at the center of the universe, is hard to miss in this lesson that we have taught by our Lord today. You see, it's the same lesson as the Gospel text. Jesus just uses two different characters. Yes, he puts a different spin on it, but it's of the same thing. The Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee has faith in his own ability to pray out prayers of that God will find righteous because he has made himself righteousness in how he has acted and what he has done. And the tax collector, by faith, approaches God in the temple, ashamed even to look upon heaven, And instead of holding his hands out in prayer, he beats his chest over and over again in repentance, knowing that he can rely on one thing and one thing only. The mercy of God. Take the lesson of Cain for you. By God's grace, you are able. By the faith God gives to you, you live in it daily. By this, you are able. But you've got a lot of Cain in you too, don't you? I know this to be true because you're human like me. You are selfish like Cain, and your favorite team is not the team of some other person, but team me. You live and you act as if you're the most important thing at times. I'm not saying every day, but your favorite team is team me. Cain got carried away. He was so jealous, so self-righteous, so self-centered, self-focused on himself that he didn't even care about his own brother's life. He thought he was so much more important that he took his, the life of his brother away from him so that only he would be the one that mattered. You see, Cain plays God. Cain is captain of Team Me. And on that day, that team had a victory because Abel was dead and now everything is about Cain. Let's learn a lesson from Cain. What not to do. Now, beloved in the Lord, I, I want you to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself because in so doing, you take care of your neighbor. You can love your neighbor by take care, taking care of yourself in a pandemic. There is nothing sinful about that. But when it comes to the, at the expense of, God, expense of God and at the expense of your neighbor, when your neighbor gets hurt or your Lord is ignored, when me is the most important person, even above God, by the way that you act, say, and do or not do, you are the team captain of a terribly selfish team. Team me. Selfishness is a pandemic. It expands far greater than COVID-19. So you learn to recognize it, and you learn not to be in the midst of it. You learn to think about others. You learn to love your neighbor as yourself. And love God above all things. And when you are first, God is not. And that breaks His command. Don't be a part of from the things that God wants you to do. Be a part of what God wills for you. Be a part of the Lord's work, 
your work that involves more than you as captain of your own team. Team me. You see, if we go again back to that Old Testament text in Genesis chapter 4, we hear the Lord ask Cain, where is Abel your brother? As if God didn't know the answer to that question already. Like any good lawyer would do, never ask a question you don't already know an answer to. I don't know, says Cain. Big fat lie. Am I my brother's keeper? What's the answer to that question? Yes. In fact, you are your brother's keeper. The proper answer to this question is get off of team me. We are our brother's keeper for the sake of our brother. And you know who you are. And you know who the Lord expects you to be. Be, but we are not alone in this. We have a Savior. The Lord Himself who was the ultimate brother keeper for us. And thank God we have that. There's something else here in the text too. I find it very interesting that Cain, he shed his brother's blood and it's crying out to him from the ground. You see, blood is life, of course. The lifeblood of Abel was crying out to God from the ground. We can imagine our Savior, too, on that cross, bleeding to death for you. The lifeblood from the cross to you. The lifeblood that surely dripped from Him from the cross to the ground, crying out to God with your name. I bleed this blood and die this death, says Jesus, for you. I bleed this blood and give it to you in the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of the altar for you. I bleed this blood and die this death that you may know that it is only by grace through faith do you have righteousness. And you are never self-righteous. You are never righteous in yourself. The sinful tax collector is to be who you are. The sinful tax collector, not by his sins, but by his piety and strength. The strength that is not within him, but within Christ Jesus our Lord. The strength that came to him that day and by grace gave him what he did not deserve. Forgiveness of all of his sins. The most unrighteous man made the righteous man. Cain thought he was righteous in himself. But unrighteous was he who lied, who stole the life of his brother. And now, we look upon our Savior Jesus. His work, his life for us, giving us himself as a ransom for many in these degradated times. In your joys and in your sorrows, our Lord's lifeblood is for your strength and for your life. The least selfish life of all. The life of our Savior gives all of Himself for you. In Jesus' name, Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.
our prayers for this week, remember especially all those who are sick or recovering or receiving treatment for Ron Schock, Paul Schutbach, Laverne Ludy, Liz Kimball, Linda Reinert, Bradley Hagler, Gerald Whitmire, Warren Stulak, for Craig and Karen Kalman, Blake Fowler, Rebecca Belt, Susan Kim and Elwood Trotter, for Joyce White Bob St and Bob Stewart, all these are on their health concerns. We pray also for Greg Goodson, Janelle Hopkins, Hal Sinclair, and Lane Dorsey who are recovering. Also for Nisi Webb and her family and for Rachel Buckholtz and her uh, foster children. We pray also this week for Janet Mann, Eileen Sprouse, and Heidi Scroggins who are recovering from surgery. For Dale Eggerstead who will be having surgery this week. For Mary Orvis uh, regarding her health concerns. Mary is the sister of Jim Moore. We also pray for Shannon Thomas and Reed Tomey who will be united in holy marriage on Saturday. Uh, we continue our prayers for our country amid the current uh, epidemic. We also pray this week for David Richardson, who is in hospice care, and also for Kim Newby, who is hospitalized. We also give a prayer petition for Logan and Michelle Grace at the birth of a daughter, and for uh, Matthew and Amy Whitmire at the birth of a son. Dear the beloved, let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Be merciful to us, Heavenly Father, for daily and much do we sin and transgress your holy will. For the sake of the perfect life and sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, forgive our sins. Fill us with your Spirit that we would remain humble, never forgetting that we have been saved by grace through faith, which was not our doing, but by your gracious gift. Be merciful to our neighbors, especially those who have sinned against us and done us harm. Give us patience and strength that we would deal with them gently and humbly and that we would be ready to forgive as we have been forgiven. Be merciful to your church, both here and in every place. Send forth faithful servants to deliver your grace and mercy to sinners in need. Defend all pastors from arrogance and pride and strengthen them in the faithful preaching of your word that true unity in faith would be found wherever Christ crucified is proclaimed. Be merciful to our leaders that they would exercise the authority given them with wisdom and righteousness so that we would be enabled to live in freedom and peace. Be merciful to all those in need, especially children who lack food, clothing, and shelter, and provide for their needs. Look in mercy also upon all orphans who are in need of parents to care for them. Provide them with loving fathers and mothers until such provision is realized. Bless those who care for them, that they would do so in love, which is filled with mercy and compassion. Be merciful, Lord, to the sick and sorrowing, especially Ron, Paul, Laverne, Liz, Linda, Bradley, Gerald, Warren, Craig, Karen, Blake, Rebecca, Susan, Elwood, Joyce, Bob, Greg, Janelle, Hal, Blaine, Nisi, Rachel, Noah, Emmeline, Jeanette, uh, Eileen, Heidi, Dale, Mary, David, Kim, and our country amid this epidemic, that they would receive not only temporal relief, but that in all times and places and under all circumstances, they would know the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life won for them in Christ Jesus. Bless Shannon and Reed as they are united in the holy estate of matrimony this, Sunday, this Saturday, Grant that they may be a reflection of your Son and his bride, the Church. We thank and praise you for the birth of a daughter to Logan and Michelle, and also for the birth of a son to Matthew and Amy. Protect and preserve these children unto the waters of holy baptism. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
Lord, lift up his counts upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.